my name is Margaret Adele and I am not entirely here. I genuinely considered just skipping the November wrap up entirely. I actually had to convince myself that it was still worth doing in the end because <laughs> my life got real hectic at the very end of November. On November 30th, we got a call for the placement of a newborn. So there is now a child in the house whose age, as of filming this, cannot even be measured in weeks. <laughs> so <laughs> my, my life's a little weird right now. I am still working from home, but now I'm just also doing it with a baby in my arms. And in a, my living room looks like the baby aisle at Target threw up. <laughs> so my reading has gotten a little weird. And when I was thinking about filming the wrap-up, I had to remind myself that it's the November wrap-up because I couldn't even remember what month I was supposed to be wrapping up. So, <laughs> it's been a little crazy. And it's going to be um, the most condensed version because the majority of the books I read in November, and I did read a lot, all have some kind of other video. So I'm going to give the barest overview of the book and if you are at all interested the links will be down in the description because some of these like I literally can't remember half the plot <laughs> right now my brain is so caught up with feeding times and and what onesies do we have clean and it's just it's y'all get it y'all are are good people I trust that you won't hold this against me so there will be three different sections the indie book reviews of which I did not read a lot over the month of November I think I got burned out from all that I read in October um I am still open but I'm also getting really close to that closing work again Anyway, there will also be the books that had other non-review videos, and then lastly, the couple of books that had no videos at all. But without further ado, uh, let's jump right in. First up, I read and reviewed Nexus by E.J. Fish. This is a military sci-fi and the sequel to Dakiti and the second in the Ziva Pavane book series by E.J. Fish. I also read and reviewed Songs of Insurrection by J.C. Kang. This is another book in the Legends of Tivari universe set in an ancient Chinese equivalent fantasy world. Next up, I read and reviewed Survival Kit by A.H. Haga. This is a zombie survival novel with an own voices, invisible illness uh, rep protagonist. Oh, and W.L.W. Lastly, I read and reviewed Of Magpies and Men by Aude Ray. This is a literary thriller uh, with a non-linear storytelling all about two dead bodies that wash up and the people they're connected to. All right, now for the videos that I did that were not reviews but still talked about books. So first up, I did a 24-hour readathon in which I either finished or read in full four books. So I first read... Oop, Immortal Danger by Cynthia Eden. This is a paranormal romance between a vampire and, well, you don't know what the other protagonist is at first, but I did appreciate the reveal. Um, and I finished that one during it, although I had begun it before. I also read in that time The City of Ember by Jeanne Dupro. This is a mid-grade sci-fi dystopian type book about an underground city and the people that are living there while the lights slowly start going out. I also read in that time In Between by Lynn Burke. This is a poly romance about uh, these two men in an MLM romance who seek to add in a third, a woman. Um, and I read this for research for my NaNoWriMo story, even though the laptop that the NaNoWriMo story is on is currently stuck in a boot loop and I have to go get it taken care of and hopefully get the story back. <laughs> To close out the 24-hour readathon, I read Dawn's Promise by A.W. Exley. This is a um, Victorian-era fantasy novel about a young woman who heads to this fancy estate to be a kind of gardener. I liked it at first, but then thinking some things through, it has some very serious victim-blaming properties near the end that I really should have caught the first time around, so be on the lookout for that. Up next, I did uh, another episode of Foster Mom Reads, which feels really appropriate right now, um, where I read Almost Home by Joan Bauer. This is a mid-grade contemporary all about a girl whose mother has a uh, severe mental health crisis and she ends up in the foster care system. Um, much better foster care representation um, than the first book I read for the series, and it delves both into 
what it's like for the foster parents as well as the uh, warring struggles within the foster child, both at being happy that they're in a healthier environment, but also feeling guilty that they're feeling happy. Um, I would highly suggest this one for a much more accurate, nuanced representation of what foster care is, as opposed to the ultra dramatic, everything is horrible uh, representation that a lot of dramas like to like hammer home. Uh, next up, I read two books by the same author uh, because her Instagram marketing game is just that strong. So both by Carly Spade, I read Hades and The Other Tide. These are both romance novels. Uh, Hades is the first in the contemporary mythos series wherein the various, various uh, deities of the Greek pantheon find human partners. And the first one is, of course, Hades. He was the gloomy sad boy I needed him to be. Uh, the other book, uh, The Other Tide, is a kind of romantic comedy all about uh, two people who both really love sharks. And I believe part of the proceeds, if you choose to buy this book, do go to uh, ocean conservation. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, and yes, if you're wondering, the, the marketing game holds up. The, the books were just that good. <laughs> And lastly was a book I didn't really do in a reading vlog. I didn't really do in a review, but I did talk about it because I just loved how I found it so much. And that is Being Hers by Anna Stone. This is the first in, I don't remember the name of the series as a whole, Editing Margaret. Thank you. Um, but this is a WLW BDSM romance that I really appreciated. It has a lot of the tropes that a lot of those BDSM romances have, but they're both women and I very much appreciated it and I also think it's really funny how I found the author in the first place. <laughs> All right and now for the books that didn't get their own videos and there's really only four, only four books I have to go in depth in and even then I'm a little bit struggling. <laughs> so uh, first up I read Protecting His Witch by Zoe Forward and I'm gonna be honest I remember next to nothing. <laughs> about this book. I think it was the first one I read in November and I read it at work during our downtime um, because I'm, I'm a special needs para with really high level kids. So like they get a lot of breaks between tasks and because it's it can be a very high stress job if you're not careful. We also take a lot of breaks. Uh, you know, I've come home with scratches all over me before. So it's, it's really important to take a step back. But apparently I must have been more stressed out than I thought because I remember this is about uh, these witches that can hop dimensions and this one witch that doesn't know she's a witch that hops dimensions. He keeps finding this guy who's actually a, a druid, but he doesn't really want to be one of the druids. But of course they're destined because of course they are. And like he has to get back in the game to protect her from the, the anti-witch people. That's about the most I remember <laughs> about it. I can't remember even names right now <laughs> or like major plot points. I think there was something with like a Stonehenge type place, but I don't remember. <laughs> so I apologize to the author. I swear it wasn't that bad. It's just, it's, life is weird. I also read Alien Tango by Ginny Coke. This is the sequel in the Kitty Cat series. It is a kitschy sci-fi uh, published in the late 20 aughts. And this one uh, was about... Am I going to forget all of these? What was this about? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. They get caught in uh, this science center and there are anti-alien, like, terrorists trying to attack all the good aliens that you met in the first book. But mostly, it's very much a romance. There's so much, like, the person who recommended it to me said, oh, it's not sci-fi romance. It's so sci-fi romance. Like, so much sci-fi romance. Now, I like sci-fi romance. That's not a problem. But, like, so much of the plot is about the protagonist relationships and a lot of this I couldn't understand why I liked it because a lot of it is so dated but I think the reason I don't mind a lot of like the dated like jokes about oh men and women and all that kind of stuff is because it reads to me and I don't know if this is the actual intention of the author it reads to me like it's making fun of all that kind of stuff like it's kitschiness is ramped up so like when someone's joking about you know what kitty has in her purse it feels like they're doing it ironically and knowingly and it could just be that it's so dated that it comes across ironic or I'm being the hipster that's reading this thing that was written genuinely with an ironic overtone. But 
I still love it and I will probably be purchasing the third in the series from some thrift store at some point because I do intend to just keep reading it. It is one of my happy fun series that I read just for me. Um, don't really include much of it on the channel in general but I would still highly suggest it if you like super kitschy alien sci-fi. I also read Perfect Edition by K.B. Allen. This is another poly romance. Uh, this one is BDSM, and I like this one a little bit more than the other one I read. And yes, uh, my BookBub recommendations have directly shifted. I am seeing a lot more poly romances pop up in my recommendations now, and I'm not mad. Um, but this is about this uh, MLM couple who do BDSM, and they decide they want to bring in, again, another woman into the dynamic. Um, however, for this book, more so than the other one, it felt much more even keeled in that it felt like both of the men wanted this woman to be a part of their relationship equally whereas with um what's the other one called in between with in between it felt like one of the men wanted it and the other one was just going along with it for his sake but in this one I definitely felt yes this is a poly relationship they are all on board with this they are all invested in this they all like this and like uh the man that originally uh like suggests doing this was very close friends with the woman so there was there's kind of like a, a friends to lovers aspect to it and yes there is BDSM uh which I did not realize I loved reading so much in romances because like I don't have a lot of like desires for that I just love reading about it for whatever reason um but yes I am going to continue reading more poly romances moving forward uh but I low-key have yet to read any that's all of one sex and I feel like that would be really cool <laughs> to read that but I don't know regardless the last book that I read well that didn't require a video in the month of November is 10 BS medical tropes that need to die today and what to do instead, which I'm really hoping I remembered to read that entire title out because I have a, an abridged version of my notes by Samantha Kiel. This is a nonfiction book. I read it for my nonfiction prompt in, in December, and this is basically what it sounds like. This is a professional from the medical field uh, bringing up 10 overused and incorrect tropes from various forms of media. The getting shot in the shoulder, the he's going into shock, the uh, how every patient on Grey's Anatomy is somehow a young attractive person. Um, and it talks about how these are all false. You know, most of the patients in the hospital are elderly. Getting shot in the shoulder isn't actually getting shot in the shoulder. It's actually getting shot in the chest and has a really high mortality rate and it's actually really bad and you can't just shrug it off. And yes, when Batman decides to knock all those henchmen unconscious, he's actually basically killing them. It's not the moral high ground. Just don't knock henchmen unconscious and call your hero the good guy. But I really appreciated it for all of the different tropes it brought up and talked about. And it did give me a lot of ideas moving forward for all of the, you know, injuries I want to administer to my characters. And I would highly suggest it. It's like 58 pages in total. And while a lot of the medical jargon went over my head, the ideas I brought up were still really solid and I would still 100% recommend it. And that is it. I am finished. There's a baby crying and I think my husband is taking care of it, but I'm going to wrap this up anyway. So thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping that I can keep my mental faculties on point because it is in December and I don't want to get up on that. Um, and I'm not going to push my way through. I'm not going to like force myself um, into reading a lot just for the sake of being productive when I have every reason to take it easier now. Um, however, there's such a high likelihood that I might end up closed. To review request again. I didn't try to do this, guys, I swear. That's just how my brain is right now. So anyway, with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.